In the normal nerve ending at the neuromuscular junction, there exists numerous small preformed vesicles containing the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. As an action potential travels down the nerve and reaches the nerve ending, it causes the acetylcholine containing vesicles to dock to the terminal of the junction. The membrane of the acetylcholine containing vesicle fuses and releases acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. Acetylcholine is then bound to the postsynaptic muscle membrane and muscular contraction is initiated. Allowing the preformed acetylcholine vesicles to dock and fuse to the membrane is a structure termed the synaptic fusion complex, which is made up of a group of proteins known as the snare proteins. Two sets of snare proteins exist and are required for fusion and neurotransmitter release. One on the acetylcholine-containing vesicle, termed synaptobrevin, also known as vesicle-associated membrane protein, or VAMP, and another group on the neuronal membrane, called soluble N-ethylmalamide-sensitive fusion attachment protein 25, or SNAP25, and syntaxin. The snare complex formation is an energy-releasing process that may supply the required free energy for membrane fusion. This snare core complex is the location for the mechanism of action for botulinum toxins. If one or more of the snare proteins are damaged, the acetylcholine containing vesicles cannot dock and fuse and acetylcholine cannot be released. Botulinum toxin type B consists of both a heavy chain that binds to synaptotagmin and a light chain which is internalized into the vesicle through endocytosis. Within the vesicle, within the nerve ending, the light chain, through a yet-to-be-determined process, translocates the vesicular membrane and through an enzymatic process, cleaves synaptobrevin in the acetylcholine-containing vesicles in the nerve ending. This process results in an inability for the acetylcholine-containing vesicles to fuse, and as a result, chemodenervation occurs. Once synaptic transmission is inhibited, the target structure no longer functions. In the case of skeletal muscle, it means muscle contraction ceases. In response to this chemodenervation, which results in inhibition of acetylcholine release, new smaller unmyelinated nerve endings, termed peripheral sprouts, are formed which are able to restore normal neurotransmission. Thereafter, the light chains are degraded within the nerve terminal that was originally affected by botulinum toxin. Normal neurotransmission can be reestablished and the nerve endings that sprouted retract. Peripheral sprouting usually begins to occur in 28 days and normal nerve transmission is normally reestablished in approximately three months following botulinum toxin injection.